In this lecture, we'll be studying about user operating system interface. Now, in the previous lecture, when we studied about operating system services, we saw that user interface is one of the most important service that is provided by the operating system. Now, what is a user interface? A user interface is something that allows the user to actually interact with the operating system. So in this lecture, we'll be seeing a little bit more about the user interfaces and we will see what are the approaches that allows the user to actually interact with the operating system. Now, there are two fundamental approaches for users to interface with the operating system. Now, if you remember in the previous lecture, we talked a little bit about this, that there are two fundamental approaches for the user to interface with the operating system. The first one being the command line interface or CLI. So the first approach is to provide a command line interface or a command interpreter that allows users to directly enter commands that are to be performed by the operating system. So this is the first approach in which we have something known as the command line interface or CLI, also known as the command interpreter, in which the user have to enter the command of the task that he wants to perform. So the command has to be entered in the CLI and based on the command, the operating system will perform that task. So in this process, the user has to remember all the commands that he needs for performing certain tasks. And then the second approach is to allow the user to interface with the operating system via a graphical user interface or GUI. So the graphical user interface is the most commonly used as well as the most user-friendly kind of user interface which you usually use in your day-to-day -day life. So in a graphical user interface, what we have is we have your desktop with your menus and then using your mouse or your pointing devices, you can click on your menus or using your keyboard, you can enter something and in that way you interact with the operating system. So even while you are watching this video, you got here using your graphical user interface. So these are the two fundamental approaches for the users to interface with the operating system. Now we'll be seeing a little bit more in detail about the command line interfaces and then we will take an example of how to perform a certain task using the command line interface in two different operating systems. So I'll be showing you an example in Linux operating system and also in Windows operating system in order to perform a certain task. So as I already told you, the command line interface is also known as the command interpreter. And what happens is that some operating systems, they include the command interpreter in the kernel. Now, what is a kernel? The kernel is like the heart of your operating system. So we'll be discussing more about kernel as we move ahead in this lecture series. You must know that in some operating systems, the command interpreter is included in the kernel itself. Whereas in others, such as Windows XP and Unix, they treat the command interpreter as a special program. So these are two points that you should remember that in some operating systems, the command interpreter is included in the kernel, whereas in some operating systems, it is treated as a special program. Now, you must have already known about the command interpreters in different operating systems, like in your Windows, you have the command prompt, also known as a CMD sometimes. And in your Linux, you have a program known as Terminal, which allows you to interact with the CLI. So I'll be showing you those examples later on. Now, on some systems with multiple command interpreters to choose from, the interpreters are known as shells. Now, on some systems, you may have multiple command interpreters from which you can choose, and the interpreters are known as shells. For example, you have the bone shell, the C shell, or the born again shell also known as bash you must have come across this b-a-s-h which stands for the born again shell and the corn shell etc so these are some of the examples of shells that you have now the question is how does the command interpreter actually perform the task that you enter using a command so there are two approaches in which a command interpreter actually executes a task so in the first approach, what happens is that the code for performing a certain task is included in the command interpreter itself. So let's say that you want to perform a certain task and the task could be anything. There are many tasks that you can perform like creating a file, deleting a file, copying or moving a file, renaming a file or executing a file and so on. There are many kind of tasks that you may want to perform. Now let's say that you want to perform a task of creating a file. Now, in the first approach, we said that the command interpreter itself, it contains the code for performing the certain task. Now, when you enter the command for creating a file, what happens is 
the code for creating the file is contained in the command interpreter itself so that code will be executed from the command interpreter itself when you try to create a new file now the second approach is that the command interpreter itself does not contain any codes but the codes are written in certain programs so there are certain programs which are responsible for performing certain tasks and the command interpreter what it does is that it will just call the program based on the command that you enter so the command interpreter itself does not understand or does not know how to execute that command that you enter so let's say that you want to create a file again so in the second approach you enter the command for creating a file so the command interpreter what it will do is that it is not going to run that code from itself because it does not have any code itself so what it will do is it will call that program which is responsible for creating a file so that is how the second approach work so in the first approach the code is contained in the command interpreter itself and in the second approach the codes are contained in certain programs and the command interpreter just calls the programs when a certain task has to be performed when a command is entered so that is how the command interpreter works now i will show you an example of using the command interpreter or the command line interfaces in two different operating systems so let's say that we have a small task of just creating two directories and also we want to delete those directories after we created them so i will be showing you how we can use the cli in linux mint and also how we can use the cli in windows to perform this small task so here I am on a Linux Mint operating system which is an Ubuntu based operating system and as you see this is the desktop of my Linux Mint and now we will see how we can use the terminal in order to interact with the shell and perform a certain task and let's say that the simple task that we want to perform is to create a directory on this desktop and then to delete that same directory. So first of all what you have to do is you have to open your terminal. So in order to open your terminal you can press Ctrl Alt T on your keyboard and then when you press that the terminal gets opened up for you which looks something like this. So here the first thing that you see is your username followed by the computer name or your host name after this at the right symbol. So the first thing that we need to do here is we need to go to the desktop because we are going to create the directory on our desktop. And right now we are not on the desktop so in order to check where you are right now if you want to know your present location there is a command called PWD which means print working directory so if you press enter it will show you what is your current location so here you are in home Neso and you are not on the desktop so we need to go to the desktop so in order to go to the desktop there is a command called CD which means change directory and then you have to type desktop and when you press enter you now enter the desktop now you can check again by typing pwd which prints your present working directory and here now you are on the desktop now here we want to create a directory now in order to create a directory there is a command called mkdir which stands for make directory and followed by space you have to give the name of your directory so let me just call it my file one and when i press enter the my file one directory gets created on the desktop now if you want to see what are the contents on your desktop there is a command called ls which means list and if you press enter you will see that my file one is present on the desktop so i can minimize my terminal and show you my file one is created on the desktop now let's say we want to create one more file in that same way mkdir and i call it my file two so if i press enter again and if i list out my files again on the desktop you see that my file 1 and my file 2 are created on the desktop so here we see my file 1 and my file 2 all right now we want to delete this my file 1 and my file 2 so in order to delete this there is another command called rm which means remove and followed by hyphen rf now this rm is used to delete files and if you want to delete directories you have to give this extra command called hyphen rf and then space and you have to give the name of your file so let's say i want to delete my file one which is the name of our file and when i press enter my file one will now be deleted now if i try to list out my files on the desktop by using the ls command you see that only my file two is present now because we have deleted my file one so let's go and see 
in the desktop my file one is gone only my file two is present now you can do the same thing for my file two as well rm hyphen rf my file two and if you press enter and if you list out you see that there is nothing on the desktop now and both my file one and my file two gets deleted so that is how you can perform tasks using the terminal so this is just a simple example of using the terminal in linux now let us try to perform the same task in windows so here i am on a windows 7 operating system and in order to do the same thing that we did in linux in windows what we have to do is we have to go to your start menu and type cmd and click on cmd which is your command prompt and this is the command line interface for windows so what we are going to do is we are again going to create two directories my file one and my file two on the desktop and then we will delete them so first of all what we have to do is we have to go to the desktop so right now this is the location in which we are c users nestle so we have to go to the desktop for that we will type the same command cd which means change directory and then desktop now when you press enter you enter the desktop now now in order to make the files or to create the directory what we will do is we will use a command called mkdir which means make directory and then the name of our file so which i will call my file one so when you press enter you see that my file one is created on the desktop and if you want to make another file my file two you use the same command and my file two gets created now if you want to see the contents of the desktop you can type dir so in Linux we used ls so in Windows you will be using dir so if you press enter you can see these are the files present on the desktop my file 1 and my file 2 which are these two and new folder is the one which was already present from before alright now we want to delete my file 1 and my file 2 so for that we will use a command called rmdir which means remove directory and then followed by the name of your directory that is my file 1 so if you press enter you see that my file 1 gets deleted and if you want to do the same thing for my file 2 you can type rmdir my file 2 so my file 2 also gets deleted so that is how you use the command prompt in order to do the same thing that we just did in linux so if you want to do the same thing using graphical user interface it's very easy you already know how to do it just right click and go to new and go to folder and give the name of your folder and then your directory gets created so it's very easy how to do using graphical user interface you used to do it almost every day in your day-to-day -day life and if you want to delete it it's very easy just right click again and go to delete and then it gets deleted or you can just select it and press delete on your keyboard and in that way also it gets deleted so that is how user friendly and easy it is to use the graphical user interface and we have also seen how to do the same thing using command line interface. So in those examples we saw how we can use the command line interface to perform certain tasks in Windows as well as in Linux and also we saw a small demo of the graphical user interface. So I hope these examples help to understand how the user actually interacts with the operating system using these user operating system interfaces. So I hope this was clear to you. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.